again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, almost at the end of September. Yes. And Isn't that crazy? Oh, it, just come, it just seems like one day you're at the beach, and then I'll, it's September, for whatever reason, always just flies. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, I, boom, this, fall. This entire year has flown for me, and now I'm trying to do my entire year's goals in like a month. In one month. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And I'm trying to run for office. So uh, Speaking I of. I should put my we, um, here. <laughs> so Dan and I were out last weekend with Victoria Sullivan knocking on doors in Ward 10. And um, Victoria did a little Facebook Live the, on Sunday morning because she was thinking about some of the things. And I... Um, Victoria's Facebook Live brought up a good point. She said, um, the bail reform stuff isn't what people think of first, but as soon as you mention it, they're like, oh yeah, that totally needs to be fixed. So it is an interesting, very Manchester-centric um, issue, I think. Um, and everybody knows, everybody we we're talking to anyway, seems to obviously be um, frustrated with inflation and the price of electricity and the pl- price of you know heating their home and all that stuff. But I think they also realize that there's not a ton that New Ham- like legislature in New Hampshire can do to change it because those are all from bad policies at the federal level. Um, well, I mean, I we mean, there's could, some things, we but could I mean, do things like you know uh, decentralized school choice even more. Well, I was just, uh, maybe you know uh, uh, that's what I think the most surprising thing was how many of our conversations went to education. You know, no matter where we started, they went to education and on a broad spectrum. And we were not, um, I wouldn't say we were in, in, in a neighborhood on that particular day that was um, a lot of lower income families. Um, so they have a unique, there's a unique problem because like, for instance, one family was talking about how their children went to high school, but they couldn't, like, literally, I'm t- it's sad to hear so many people say, well, as soon as my kids are done with school, we're gone. We're leaving. We can't stay here anymore. This is just out of control. The crime is out of, you know, like, people are very frustrated with Manchester. Um, so you got parents who struggled and had to fight really, really hard to get in the public schools the services that their kids need. Um, and then on the other side, you've a, ton, a lot of parents who said that we had to pull our kids out of public school and find a way to pay for it to send them to Trinity or wherever because they just couldn't continue their kids down this path that didn't seem to be going anywhere good. Um, whether it was due to the environment in the school, a lot of parents concerned that there's just no discipline in the schools anymore. Kids can basically just do whatever they want. The teachers are frustrated. You know, teachers are getting hurt. Workers' comp claims are up. There's a there's it's, a teacher shortage yeah, now, so, which is an issue. Um, so in some ways, these are all market indications yeah. that there is a deep-seated, deep-rooted problem that isn't going to be fixed by, like, tinkering on the side. And they, they, the answer, I mean, I read these op-eds in the union leader from various candidates who continue to just say, we just need to spend more money. And there is, I mean, I don't know how much more money you have to spend before your wife can open your eyes and see that there is no correlation between the amount of money at, to the degree that we're at. At the, at the very basic of the bottom, which we're long since past, sure, money pays I mean, for it, teachers. But, I mean, you can't just keep spending money and continue to have fewer children in the schools and the outcomes aren't improving and the teachers aren't happy. And I, I can't even imagine being a teacher stuck in a public school system that doesn't have your back, that isn't giving you the tools that you need to teach the kids well, that basically isn't allowing you to do your job well. Right. And, and you know, for folks who've been watching the show for a while know that Tammy and I both support school choice. Mm. We probably support mostly choice in most things in life <laughs> because um, that is what freedom is, is saying uh, you're allowed to do what you think is right for you and I get to do what I think is right for me. The problem and the reason why everyone is so frustrated is government's too big. Yep. What does that mean? It means that now suddenly everyone has this vested interest in making the government do what they they want because the government is forcing you to do things instead of allowing you to choose. So that's what we mean when we say it's too big. So with something like school choice, I think we're so stuck in these paradigms that uh, just clearly are not working. And sometimes it's like, well, why don't we put on like a brainstorming hat? I'm not saying these are the things we 
absolutely have to do. But, you know, I think sometimes people hear the way we talk and they're like, oh, you're anti-teacher. No. A lot of people accuse me of being anti-education. Now, I may be a lot of things, but, like, I really like smart people and I like people learning and I like people thinking. So... Yeah. I may be some anti-something, certainly anti-state, but I'm not. Well, that's um, the thing. You don't have to be. I do. I anti-education. Really I do very much dislike that. Um, and this is, I I know it's part of it's probably human, not, uh, not everybody's human nature, but I can understand where, you know, you start to pit your opponents or the people you don't agree with as the, the worst. Other. But oh, the like, other side, I mean. I, I'm I'm a small L libertarian Republican. This is no secret. I I believe in smaller government. I think that we can have the a very small, leaner, more efficient, more effective government. Um, for that the, just does the basics. That does what we really need. But, that, but then on the other side, I mean, you see, how, you can see it because they they take it to the umpteenth level. Frank Edelblue's the education commissioner, right? Yep. He is doing an amazing job. Yep. He has implemented policies that have allowed children to grow in different ways, to learn in different ways, to give parents the tools that they need, to give the schools the tools they need, to make sure that the schools are actually going after funding that is there for them that they fail to get. I was appalled when I heard how much money wasn't being taken by schools who it was eligible for from the federal government. So he's doing all these great things. And if you talk to most of the legislators on the on the Democratic side, you would think that Frank Edelblue was the worst thing that ever happened to New Hampshire kids' education in New Hampshire, and it's not. It's simply not the case. And it, it, it's the same thing with the name calling and the free staters, and the, you know, like it's this demonizing the right, demonizing anybody who's a part of the Republican Party because we all are looking to starve the children and kill every. You know, like I just don't even know. So, Ugh, so three so things I want to say. One is, uh, we currently in New Hampshire spend more money per student per child than we spent twenty years ago when than we spent twenty years ago in Waterville. So, Waterville is the most expensive school district, and they get the most money. So, the question is, uh, so so how how. Right. The How much money would we have to spend Nobody in order to, to suddenly it's like just actually more. educate children? Right. So, so the reason I bring that up is to indicate it doesn't actually matter how much money you spend. We've done that that uh, chart a million times, right? Spending is going up, outcomes are going down, and so we know for a fact it's not more money. So let's take that argument off the table. Then it's like, what can we do, right? So back to the brainstorming idea. What if, you know, I've actually seen posts, this is certainly a position more, you know, on the hardcore LP, big yeah. party LP, you know, people talk about we should disband the Department of Education. Okay. At on a federal, federal level, level probably. right? I mean, we should disband almost 90% of what the federal <laughs> I mean, government is doing because they're not authorized to do it by the Constitution, which is still the rule of the yeah. land. And if you don't like the Constitution, you know what you got to do? You got to amend it. So that is the path. That's how the rules of this country work, right? So let's say you disbanded the Department of Education. Now we're just doing the a federal. thought exercise. Right. The so federal level Department of Education is gone. So everything's devolved down to the states. Everything's supposed to be in the hands of the states because we are a republic and federation and the states are supposed to compete so that we can figure out what the best ideas are and then mimic those instead of going there's one solution top down let's lean into the stupidest ideas that's what the federal government is so on a state level what could it look like so Frank Edel Blue, as you said, has been doing really creative stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's there's computer classes. We know people yep. like Dean Kamen started robotics programs. There could be art schools. There could be horse thing. There could be yep. music therapy, right? Like your world is your oyster. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I want teachers to understand, one, I'm not anti-teacher, two, you could probably come up with something that would fulfill your life better. What if you did run a micropod or a pod school, which apparently, you know, is like the devil itself based know. on, you know, tweets I see. But, you know, if you had 
10 students. Yep. Uh, we know, I think the current number that's going, that's following the child with the education yep. freedom accounts is around 5K, right? So you have 10 students, they're getting their 5K, that's being given to you. Now you're making a salary of 50,000, but maybe you're like super teacher and you can teach them in three hours a day and then right. the rest is self-learning and then in the morning you're doing something else. You could have a four day work week, yep. make 50 grand a year, only have to work three hours and be happy and be happy right because the part of the problem is these people are just caught up in this system like we are literally at this stage if you haven't watched this movie everyone make time go watch the wall pink floyd's yeah. the wall because that was made in probably the 70s, 70s i guess late right? 70s probably that movie was banned in south africa a lot of things were banned in South Africa, including the movie Black Beauty, literally because it had the words black and beauty in it. So crazy, crazy country, right? But that movie came to South Africa for one arts festival. And, you know, we queued and we went to see it. And I remember it just being so mind blowing because the students in South Africa who were protesting apartheid in the townships and stuff actually used that song, We Don't Need No Education, mm -hmm. We Don't Need No Thought Control, um, as their marching song, which is pretty terrifying when yeah. people are like marching in unison and they're singing something like that yeah. because they were being forced to learn Afrikaans, which was, you know, the oppressor's language in the schools. And right. that was, you know, and anyway, so there were riots and all of that. Why do I bring this up? <laughs> Uh, that movie really sort of crystallizes or in a metaphor shows people this system, right? Yeah. Like there's that imagery where they're putting the kids in the meat grinder and they're coming out the other side. And that movie was a response to the dole, to government run education in the UK, to this sort of like gray, gray system where we start to treat our children like they're a cog in a machine instead of a beautiful, unique individual who needs to be yeah. sort of, uh, I don't know, mold, not molded, Fertilized. the opposite. Of, no, yeah, like, like, like so that they can <laughs> blossom and flourish, right? But we have this notion that if we let people be themselves, we're somehow going to have chaos. Well, because they're, they're, I do believe there is a slice of our people who don't want to let exactly what you say. You don't want too many people thinking on their own and doing their own thing because we need to control people. People want to control people. I mean, there is a whole slice of our society that wants everybody to be controlled. I mean, no, well, not only that, but you know what? Honestly, like I just, uh, you know what? I want to sit down with some Democrat. I don't know, Kathy, I know you watch the show. Maybe you and I can go have coffee or something. Here's my question. I see these emails, uh, not emails, tweets all the time now. The the main culprit at the moment that I'm seeing is Rosemary Rung. Oh, I don't know her. She's a state rep from uh, like Concord. Or, she's, yeah. she's one of the ones she, that she constantly seems, I mean, she uses seems a little vulgar language. Yeah, and, 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 and slightly unhinged mm -hmm. and very, very anti-free stater. But I had to laugh because she actually put out a tweet last week where I was like, you know, even at your most base, would you not like stop and reflect if you are literally making a post that says, um, oh, free staters don't always identify themselves as candidates. And I will ask you, so do Catholics now have or, to say they're they're Catholic or, when or they that, run? Or it's the socialists and the democratic socialists and the communists? Would you like well, to I mean, stand up just and say? So many things. The Knights of Columbus. If you don't disclose that you're a member of the Knights of Columbus, does that mean you're hiding that you're not? I mean, come so, on. So, so, so I, you know, I, I, I don't think that's a valid criticism. Mm -hmm. Everyone should do their own research. I mean, certainly most of the ones I know are out or at least Granite State Progress has like <laughs> random lists yeah. of people that are very wrong, but some of it's right, you know, whatever. Be that as it may, this Rosemary Rung literally said in her tweet, uh, you don't always know who they are, Ooh, right? So trying to spare, uh, scare, sort of scare people, it, you know, big yeah. fear is my new term for all of this nonsense. And then she said, but you can know them by the words they use on their literature. They use... And she's saying this as if it's a bad thing. They use words like freedom and liberty. The uh, horrors. And, Imagine and, and, that. And so that tweet went by and I was like, wow. do you hear yourself? Like no. if you're not for freedom and liberty, 
what are you for? So that must mean you're for control. You're for the subjugation of your neighbors. You're, I mean, if you're anti-freedom, you're pro-slavery. Yeah. I'm like, come on, guys. We can do better. You know what? We can talk about the issues without it being reduced to this level. Yep. Like if you are literally going to say this person is bad because they believe in individual liberty, you should not run for office. Eek. It is crazy. It, 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 it really, I think it, when you run for office, you see it more because you're, you're exposed to it more. Um, and what, the refreshing thing is when you're not, when I'm knocking on doors, that's not the way people seem to think. No, and so, and, okay, and, I, and don't get me wrong. I'm life, knocking. Right? I'm knocking on. I'm not knocking on hard Republican doors. I'm knocking on doors of the people. You know, soft Republicans to moderate Democrats. That range in there. And for the most part, people don't seem as angry as the Democrats would like you to believe they are. Um, interesting thing. Sim uh, you know, related but different. Um, number, poll numbers are not looking good for the P Democrat Party as a whole. Biden's numbers are stagnant Beow! at low. They just, nothing he can do Beow! seems to, seems to be able to raise. I was listening to, I forget, it wasn't Fox. It was somebody, you know, another network talking about it saying, yeah, Biden's numbers should be very concerning for the Democrats. Um, I did read in the union leader the other day, um, they were comparing, Chris Pappas against Caroline Levitt, um, and you know the pros, Caroline's pros, and you know how her biggest downfall probably is name recognition. Um, people are, you know, some people will be concerned because she's just twenty five years old. Pappas but is not that much he's older. He's forty two. Is he? Yeah, right. Wasn't he like? I thought he was like thirty two. No, when he apparently ran or he's older than he than he looks. But then they were saying his numbers are lower than they've ever been. Oh, His approval I've, number. Yeah. So those are things, those are trends that are concerning Look, for the Democrats. Not concerning at all for me. So, so um, the Democrats, I mean, genuinely the only issue I see them pushing as abortion. As, is abortion. Abortion, and, abortion, you know, abortion. Everything's honestly, about abortion. I did a, I thought one of my better shows uh, for the Carla Garrick show last week where I really tried to unpack it, right? Yeah. Because there's some level of insanity that is literally <laughs> going on, right? So first of all, again, for everyone watching this, abortion is legal in New Hampshire. It's legal up to 24 weeks. So whenever you see any ad saying something different or they're going to ban it, they're going to ban it on the federal level, the GOP is going to ban it in New Hampshire, they are lying yep. to you. So just know that and then judge them according to that because the question becomes, why do you have to mislead people on this one issue? And honestly, I'm working on an essay, Tammy, that is going to be <laughs> highly unpopular, but um, hopefully I can get some like real eyeballs on it because it's sort of about feminism and it's about the story we as women have been told about abortion because I think there's this very... Um, deep-seated connection. I see it when I talk to any of my female friends. There's this sort of um, feeling when they talk about women's rights, right. and it's your right to choose, and it's your body, your choice, right? And all of those things sound marvelous. I personally believe in self-ownership. I am pro-life. I would never get an abortion. I will judge you harshly mm -hmm. if you do it, but yeah. I personally don't think it should be illegal, but I also don't think taxpayers should pay, pay for it. One penny, not so, one penny. So, so, you know, I'm like, I think it's a bad, bad, bad decision, but reasonable people disagree. So, you know, if I believe in self-ownership, I have to extend the same rights to you that I want you to afford back to me. So you don't get to tell me what I do with my body. I don't get to tell you what you do with your body. I do get to judge you harshly. But now they've conflated this notion that it, so that idea of self-ownership has somehow been trained into women in this idea of this is it. This is what makes this one you, thing, yes. yeah, this is what makes you, uh, makes you, you stronger, strong, makes you yeah. power, empowered. Yeah, yes. it's, it's a very, very distorted emotional thing that they've created in women and I know it was done and it was done worldwide yeah. because it was done in South Africa right as well right it's right and, and, it, and you can see if you go and you really look at timelines you can see when 
when it started this mentality. I don't know what else. Yeah, to call it's it. like this, a woman's lib. It's from the seventies. Right. It's sort of like you know, and these things are tied together with female emancipation. So for women, they've sort of been trained in their heads, oh, this is like a right I have, and if you're trying to take away my right, we're gonna live in handmaid's tale. And you're not gonna be okay. able to vote, so, and you're not so, gonna be able so, to drive so, a car, and so, I don't know. Right, and, and you know, head scarves right. are next. I don't know, the same lunatics who thought masks could be forced on everyone, you know, I don't know, you guys are really, 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 really confused. And I think that cognitive dissonance is sort of where we're seeing this frequency come out. So the point I wanna make is, I want people to think about the following. What if men could have children? Now I know some, some people some might men. claim that, that that is what's happening. You know, we can, that's a conversation for another day. But I wanna ask folks who like to think about this critically. If men could have children, and if men suddenly claimed they solely had the right to kill their own offspring for any reason up until the baby's head is crowning, and in some cases, and I'm not making this up, there are bills on the table that would extend the right of abortion to infanticide for a year after birth. That is definitionally insane. But if men could have babies, how comfortable would all of us, how comfortable would society feel that they suddenly would be like, that sounds totally reasonable. You know what? Men should totally just have the right to kill their offspring, no questions asked. Now, I'm fairly confident that most people watching this are gonna react negatively. They're gonna be like, that doesn't sound right. Should men really have this like, you know? And then the question is, okay, why can you see in this scenario that that doesn't seem entirely right? right but over here, you have this vested emotional attachment to your own freedom that is distorted. And so I'm just like, it doesn't make sense. I think we're just at peak Life doesn't make sense. Well, so I, I, I'm gonna. This is. I'm totally gonna be hacking this. But I was. It. it it's one of these hypocrisies that you. You go. But isn't that the same thing as that? And how can you be this way? So one of the things I always hear from the Democrats is they would like you to believe that every child who has an education freedom account is stealing money from the public school system. Now keep in mind, you. You should be aware that at the current time. The money that say five thousand dollars. Not only is the state right now paying five thousand dollars to Johnny and his family, they're still paying five thousand dollars to the Manchester school district that Johnny doesn't go to school in anymore. Which so, doesn't make sense, but that was a concession that, was a concession that had to, make, to happen to pass the so bill. Think of that. That's a little people are surprised to learn that. So then you hear all the time them talking about how so many of these children or any of these children were already in private schools that are now getting this funding and why that's so bad, right? And I think, so for years, parents were forced to pay twice in their property taxes and in their tuition. And now we are kind of just starting to level it and make it right to say that, you know, what if you're not using the public school system, we're gonna give you those mo those monies. So again, it's your own right. money. But the, but, <laughs> so there's this outrage from the left that f children who have already been in private school now get the money. I don't know. So there's they're, they're outraged. So I was reading an article about the school board. So the school board gets paid a two thousand dollar a year stipend, wow. right? The aldermen get four thousand dollars. The school board gets two, but they still get health insurance. So there are only three school board members who take the health insurance, but it's a, a big deal. And this came up the big problem was one of the other, um, I think it was Nicole Leapley over in Ward 11, she was out a little upset because she gets her insurance through the, the marketplace, the healthcare marketplace, and she gets a, a, a government subsidy for it. So she was upset because she's no longer eligible because there is insurance available through um, not her employer, but they're categorized as employees. So there's a lot of weird things. So anyways, the solution now, proposed solution, is to change the school board stipend from $2,000 to $4,000 and do away with health insurance as an option. Hmm. And they say that it will actually save the city $30,000 a year. That's a good thing. But I'm like, but wait, 
these three people who are already like aren't we giving the same money to people who are already doing it isn't that exactly, exactly. the same thing that they're criticizing parents and children i mean like I, so wait so if you were paying for your own health insurance before at two thousand we're now going to give you four thousand because we're not paying for your health insurance yeah. i'm like it's exactly the same thing just two different scenarios one benefits them one one they don't like that I think is in a nutshell, the problem is there is no logic or rationality. And so the hypocrisy, and to be fair, the hypocr there's hypocrisy on the right equally as on the left. It ends up being wings of the same bird, mm. kind of, you know, going back to the machine metaphor and the cog in the machine thing, right? But I think that's why we're seeing so much censorship. So the censorship has to come because the world no longer makes sense. And there are just enough of us who can still critically think who will not shut up, who are saying, no, 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 two plus two equals four, to quote both Orwell and Chesterton, I believe. Uh, so I think we're gonna run out yeah, of time. Yeah, we are. Um, I Curious, I'm just going to put it out there in case anybody knows because I can't seem to find out, find any information on it. There were two shootings in West Manchester last Friday um, between 12 and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I heard those yep. shots! Um, there was one on Douglas and then there was one on Boutwell. It's on the police log, but that's all. That's all. I've never heard anything afterwards, um, which is disturbing because people be a shooting in, in a neighborhood. How, how are neighbors supposed to you know know whether things are safe in their neighborhood if they can't even no. know what's going on. I mean. um, that <laughs> happened. There was an armed robbery at the Cumberland Farms on Hanover Street on Sunday. You know, all the Cri things. Crime is going up because social malaise is going up and social malaise is going up because socialism is going up. If you want to fix these problems, elect us. Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> um, that's all we got for this week. Um, if you have any input, if you know anything about these shootings, if you want to send us hate mail, whatever you want. Don't send us hate you mail. Never, it really doesn't really make my day. But I always say it. Um, <laughs> manchtalk at gmail.com comes to the both of us, and um, we will respond. Um, oh. That's all we got. We'll see you next week. Enjoy Deerfield Fair this weekend. Take care, guys. Bye.